the World Cup itself, you've played in it, you've watched it as fans. What, what does it mean personally to both of you? Hi. It's, it's quite difficult to say. It's, it's, um, it means kind of the pinnacle of your career, the pinnacle of your sport, undoubtedly. I think once you've played in one and, and appreciated how how much of a club ethos you get in an international environment, you realise how special it is. Quite often an international game for Six Nations or on tests or even tours in the summer now or maybe two or three weeks, but you're going to get two or three months together as a squad, a squad of mates. You're going to work hard, you're going to fall out at times, but you're going to build this incredible bond. So I think it's a friendship and the bond that kind of sticks out more than actual, uh, you know, the, the iconic say, trophies or stuff like that. It's what you build together as a team. It's quite unusual in an international, uh, you know, kind of fixture to get that. And for me, that's me the strongest memories I have are, are of those things. I would, uh, I would uh, completely agree. I think it's a fantastic occasion. I think as Chris has said, it's the only time as an international squad, you actually get to spend quite a long period of time together, which is a great thing. But also, I think if we look ahead to this World Cup, I think it's the fact, the fact that it's obviously in England, that it's so close to home. I think that it's really exciting. From a playing point of view, you know, it's it's the pinnacle. It's the it's the it's the top of the game, if you like, and you can. You can see that reflected in the way that the fans have interacted with the, the, the cup over the last few days as well. It obviously, is a, it's, it's a big deal for just everybody who loves the sport, and you've seen that firsthand. Oh, yeah, and, and we're 95 days out for the, the opening game. You know, it's just going to build and build and build. Uh, and it's brilliant to have this trophy in Scotland. You know, it's, I've said yesterday that, you know, the accessibility is, it's, you know, from, from anywhere really to get ticket availability, to get to games is difficult for a lot of people, but to be uh, near this trophy and be part of the trophy tour gives them a link to the World Cup and, and so far every one of those links and everybody that's came along all of the country have enjoyed it they've been inspired by the trophy and, and you can see that in, in the footage you've got here of the kids and adults just with a big smile on their face enjoying rugby It's your first exposure I think to the to the trophy two years yes, in it Scotland. Is. What it are you is. thinking of the, the day and the crowds that's attracted? Yeah, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And what I think is great is there's probably quite a number of uh, younger kids that have heard about this thing and they've heard about the uh, the uh, Rugby World Cup, you know, but they're not exactly sure what that means. So to see the trophy, I think it's actually going to serve to inspire them. And, you know, hopefully quite a number of the kids that have seen the trophy in several years will actually be uh, be uh, competing for Scotland on the international stage. Your perspective, because you're, you're obviously down south, you're playing your rugby in England, yeah. and they've got this this massive chance to host you know, what is a great tournament. What are they thinking about their group, Kelly? Yeah, because it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a cracker. It's very tough. Yeah, it's very, very tough. In saying that, I think actually the English side is in a really good place. They had a pretty strong Six Nations. They've got a lot of strength and depth, and they've got a lot of guys that are playing well. And so I actually think, I actually think England will be very, very dangerous at this World Cup. 1999 was was your first World Cup, and I think 2007. 2007. 2007. Yeah. Can you pick one moment from your your World Cup careers that that just symbolises what the, the the cup means to you? Um, on the, on the spot, just do yeah, it. Yeah, well, I, I say this, I've got a bit more time to think, he has to go first. I, I say this often, and it's in 2003. I, um, my favourite World Cup well, that I played in was the 2003 one in Australia. I thought the way they hosted it, the, their attitude to sport, the, you know, the whole thing really was fantastic. And we played Australia, the host nation, in the quarter final in Brisbane. And, uh, in October and November 2003 and it was something that happened that night I've said many times before that this is my strongest memory of, of my international career not just the, the World Cup career it was that night it was Brian Redpath, Gregor Townsend uh, Glenn Metcalf's last game for Scotland against the Stewart and, and these are three guys that really helped me and inspired me and, and I was lucky enough to play alongside them but to play alongside them in the last ever game it was pretty special so that turned out to be the last game uh, and, and the host nation in a quarter final alongside some of the guys you've grown up you know, idolising was really quite a special moment. So it's kind of not really the rugby, it's more the social aspect or the, or the personal aspect. Really for you? I think probably one of, one of the things that really sticks out for me was in the 2007 World Cup, our first game we played against Portugal mm -hmm. and we're leading by about, up by about uh, 40 points. So we had enough of a lead, so I came off the bench uh, and I actually managed to score. And as I was going over the line, the uh, thoughts that were sort of uh, shooting through my head, it was just unbelievable. I was, I was running over and I was thinking, 
I was thinking, this is just unbelievably surreal. It's something I have watched my whole life. You know, I always, I always actually, uh, actually uh, dreamed of uh, getting the chance to uh, play for Scotland and to actually do it and to score in a World Cup was just unbelievable. And that is a moment that will stick with me for the rest of my life. I was thinking just get under the sticks to make the kick easier. <laughs> <laughs> 33 out of 33, I believe, in that uh, World Cup, was it not Muscat? Uh, something like that. Easy, something, something easy, like never in doubt. <laughs> imagine you, imagine you're, a, you're a fan and you've got your, uh, your mini fridge in front of the TV, your Coke, whatever your, whatever your tipple is. The games in this World Cup, when you, when we've talked a little bit about this, uh, Chris, so I'll ask Kelly this one, the games, mm -hmm. In every pool, yeah. are, are tight, and the opportunity for for perhaps upsets mm. is 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 quite high. Yes, I think I think that that is absolutely the case. Let's uh, stick with Scotland. We've got four other very very tough sides in our pool. Uh, obviously, South Africa and Samoa are I think ranked above us. And then if you look at the other two sides. You know, the, uh, the uh, USA are a very, very strong side. We've actually got four of their, four of their players at Saracens and they are very good players. And then also Japan is a side that is very much on the up. And also I believe that they are, they are, they are actually hosting the uh, next World Cup. So they will be wanting to make a statement. OK, so day four of Rugby World Cup Trophy Tour in Scotland brings us to Inverness. We had a great morning at Highland Rugby Club at Canal Park in Inverness. Uh, we caught up with Kelly Brown there and the trophy continued to inspire loads of individuals, young and old. Um, from here we head down the west coast. Tomorrow we go to Glasgow at Scotson and we're on air before the trophy boards the ferry to Ireland. But before then, it's a time for the, the guys in the squad to take a bit of time, rest and recover. <laughs> 